Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel where today you're joining me in a Land Rover Discovery 4. I have also had a Land Rover Discovery 4 previously on the channel. That was a 2012 SDV6, so it was the first with the SDV6 and the 8-speed gearbox and that was also the GS model and the GS model sits kind of like at the bottom of the pile um, but that doesn't mean that it's by any means a bad car. Um, do check out that video and you'll see as to why I actually quite like it. Um, but this one here is a 2014 64 plate, so it is the first of the facelifted or the second facelift that it had. And, uh, and it has these cool LED filaments in the front lights and it's got the rear lights that have got the black surrounds and things. So it looks aesthetically slightly different. And it is an SE tech in terms of the model, so it does have a few more trick bits than the GS that I filmed with. The main one being this centre screen here. Um, so the GS didn't have that in the one that I filmed with and, uh, and I didn't necessarily think that was a bad thing but it is also nice to have more spec of course when you have the opportunity to have it. So with this screen being the 2014 it shares the same type of screen as to what my L494 shares. So we've got very similar type looking menus. It has both Bluetooth for your telephone and also your audio streaming, which is quite a nice thing to have. And because it has the screen, the SE Tech does have the rear reversing camera. And that is a really handy tool to have, especially in this instance, because it's got the fixed tow bar on the back and you can actually see it on the camera. So when you then go to obviously hook up your trailer or whatever it is that you wanted to hook up, it's relatively easy to do that has the front and rear parking sensors and it also has a couple more trick bits over and above what the SE Tech has and I think they're worth considering should you be looking for a Land Rover Discovery 4. The Meridian sound system that this one has is an additional extra so it comes as standard on the HSE but with an SE Tech it's an additional extra and it is a fantastic sound system to have if you really like music I do think it's worth trying to find one that has it. They all come as standard with the full size seven seats and that is definitely worth mentioning. If you're looking for a seven seater, they are seven full size seats. And what I mean by that is if you were to look at a BMW X5, I've got an E70 in the showroom, that's why it springs to mind. That one there is a five plus two. So they call it a plus two seating arrangement. And I mean, I'm not the biggest bloke in the world. I'm at five foot nine and I really wouldn't want to be sat in the back the back back row of that BMW X5. The rest of it, very, very comfortable, uh, but I'd be quite happy to sit in the back of this one because they are seven full-size seats. That is really worth having. Has, of course, the luxury dual climate control in this one here, which is nice, to, nice and easy to use. You've got your center dial, which is your fan control, and then your exterior dials on that one there, just doing your temperature control. This one here does have heated seats, which again would have been an additional extra with the SE Tech. Um, it doesn't have the electric memory seat, so it, that goes one step further. And I actually noticed the difference between the two, because if you have that option with the electric memory function, it quite often has the armrest. And I have to be honest, I'm missing the armrest in this one. It's still a very, very comfortable drive. They've got nice wide seat bases, and it is ever so effortless when you've got this SDV6. But I like having the armrest and, and I'm kind of missing without it. I suppose my Range Rover has it and most other things I drive tend to have it. So um, yeah, it may not be for everyone. I know that for example, my daddy always puts the, um, the armrest up. He doesn't like having it. So, you know, it may not be for everyone, uh, but I quite like having that. Um, it does have the cruise control as well. That came as standard as part of the SE Tech and it didn't come uh, with a standard on the GS model. The Xenon's come as standard with the face lifted side of things on an SE Tech. So that's really quite nice to have. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a middle ground between the GS that I filmed with and the full fat HSE. So the full fat HSE would have the electric memory seats with the armrest as standard. It would also have the three sunroofs going through to the back and a couple of other trick bits going through a standard Meridian sound system and things like that. So this is kind of in between the two. Uh, in terms of the engine and the comfort and the, the gearbox and that is fantastic. As I say, I've, I've had quite a few of the Land Rovers with these kind of setups in them. The SD V6 is a 3 litre V6 twin turbo producing 255 brake horsepower. It's the same block that's used in the L320 because it's the same power rating and everything. It's also the same block used in the L494, but it's not uprated as such on the power. So in the L494, they did 292 brake horsepower and 306. This one here is 255, but it still feels relatively sensible for the car. Again, you're not going to be doing any kind of street racing, but it certainly has enough power and enough torque to do the towing of three and a half ton, which is one of Land Rover's 
big selling points, isn't it? It's, it's the ability that the cars are able to have. And it, of course, it is always with the adjustable air suspension, and you've also got the terrain response systems too. The only thing I will say in comparison to the Range Rover is that you, because you are sat that slightly bit taller, and you've got the aerodynamics of, let's face it, a house, it feels a little bit more wallowy when you're going through the corners. The sport definitely feels a little bit more planted, um, but that's not to take away from it. It is incredibly comfortable still. It seems to absorb the bumps a little bit better. So it's more of a, an agricultural work tool than it is a luxurious sport SUV. And, and that is the big difference between the Discovery and also the Sport. And, and a lot of people will prefer to have the Discovery for that reason, because it is ever so comfortable. You know, I'm driving along here now and, and it is country roads and they're full of potholes and, and you're forever having to go over the, uh, the cat's eyes to, to avoid potholes. And it just absorbs all of it. It's really quite comfortable. And I'm, I'm, I enjoy driving the Land Rover Discoveries for sure. So yeah, they look the part. And, uh, and they're ever so comfortable. So just whizzing up my little bit of hill that I have here, it's really responsive. It's, you know, it's, as it's not, I'm not expecting it to be as quick as my Sport, because that is, you know, 300 brake horsepower, uh, which is considerably more than this, but it still has enough pickup to, to make you feel comfortable when driving the car and the reason I say that is because I've had bigger SUVs that have only got the two litre turbo diesel engine in it and, and you don't necessarily feel comfortable in it. You, you almost know in the back of your mind that the engine isn't quite big enough or powerful enough to sustain this level of car um, but this three litre SDV6 I've got no worries with that whatsoever especially since it's paired with this infamous eight speed ZF gearbox. It's a really nice gearbox to use and I've said it in previous videos of mine eight speed I think is the optimum number with every Everything that's out there at the moment and I only say that because sometimes when I've driven the Mercedes with the nine speeds and even Ford with the ten speeds sometimes it's it's a little bit hesitant it's almost trying to find the absolute optimum gear because there's too many to choose from the eight speed ever so good and it does mean that you do get a slightly better MPG than certainly what you did with the TDV6 with the six speeds so on these country roads that I tend to drive often what have we got here uh, da -da. We've got MPG, just bringing it up on there. The average MPG, I'm doing 29.7. And I think for a vehicle of this size, giving this level of comfort and this level of practicality, it's not necessarily a figure that you'd necessarily grumble about. The other big advantage we'd have at a pre or a post 2014 facelift, I should say, with these different lights, that's the big giveaway as to when it's a 2014 uh, 64 with this facelift, is you get this little button down here which says eco on it and you can turn it on and off and essentially what it does is it turns on and off your stop and start technology that technology is nothing short of annoying in my mind because there's nothing more frustrating than when you get into a junction or a red light and where you need it to just pick up it doesn't quite because it has to turn itself back on and a lot of people just don't have confidence in it so there's a huge amount of people that turn it off but i don't mind having that button there because what that means for me is if i were buying this and it didn't have that so let's say it was a 2012 model and uh, and i was buying it with the same setup so the three liter stv6 with the eight speed gearbox it would be 615 pound a year to tax it as it stands at the moment in the uk with the eco and the stop start technology that actually means that it's producing less of a co2 on their average that they work it out on and that means that the tax cost goes down to 360 and i think that's a massive saving to be had year on year if you're going to keep this car for a long time that year on year saving of your annuals uh, tax and everything is is massive it definitely adds up and of course it's always nicer to, to feel a bit greener about the planet when not having quite such a uh, an expensive annual tax bill um, but all in all really very comfortable got plenty of power plenty of torque and, uh, and a really pleasant place to be there's not a huge amount of road noise coming through the car at all it's very very comfortable and I think as an SE tech goes it has a good amount of spec 
and you do get that little bit of a saving because of course if you go for the HSE you have to pay a little bit more of a premium for it. It comes with more spec, I'm not taking it away from the fact and it's still a very nice car, absolutely. Um, but you can get something that's perhaps a little bit newer or a little bit lower mileage with a very reasonable level of spec. So you've still got this media screen, you still have the rear camera, still got the heated front seats and cruise control, but you're not having to pay that little bit more to have the HSE. And what I always say with all of my vehicles, and I know in particular with Land Rover, they always have this kind of perception that they're not a very reliable vehicle and that you should stay well away from them. It all comes down to how well they're maintained. I'm not going to say that they're bulletproof. They're by no means are they bulletproof. But I think if you find one that's got a really good service history and a telltale sign such as all four matching Pirelli tyres or at least tyres that are matching on each axle that are branded quality tyres that Land Rover would want you to put them on. So for example, if you've got Pirelli tyres or Michelin tyres, and I think if people are willing to spend the money on the car and maintain it to a standard, and you find one that's been really well cared for, I think you're in for a winner. I mean, this one here back in last year had like near enough 1,900 pounds spent on it because it needed new front and lower arms, which are quite a common thing to need it, but they are big, heavy vehicles to have on the road and especially with all these potholes and stuff. So don't be surprised if you have to do lower arms. It's also had a new aircon compressor, had disc and pads all around and along with the full service as well. So I think, well, if someone's done that as their everyday car and they're willing to spend the money on it and you, you've got evidence of it, you can't really go far too wrong. And as most other people do when, they, when they're doing a review on a Land Rover, if you've got a little bit of a kitty with some funds in it to fix whatever goes wrong, you're in for a really pleasant driving experience, that's for sure. I really hope you enjoyed watching this, uh, this YouTube video and please do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It really does mean a lot. Give the video a thumbs up or leave a comment or anything and I'll do my best to get back to you and I hope to see you for the next one. Thank you. Bye.